From the futuristic to the prehistoric, the out of the ordinary sale is certainly getting people talking. With over 155 lots to go under the hammer, we enlisted the help of social historian Janie Hampton to pick out the highlights. I really like this. This is the bell from HMS Titanic, but not the real bell. It's from the film of A Night to Remember, which I remember watching on the edge of my seat. And they've gone to the trouble of making this, and it actually works. Listen. Wouldn't it be great to have this in your house? It's not actually a toy, it's a real robot. The first one built in 1957, the year of Sputnik. The name is Geigen. And although not quite human, he's certainly the nearest approach yet created by man. It's not often that you have to put white gloves on to pick up an old tin of butter beans full of some old paintbrushes, but these are quite special. These were used by Francis Bacon, possibly to paint Lucy and Freud, and they're completely wedged in with the paint, and they still smell, and they reckon they might go for £25,000. The sale has taken over six months to curate, and the items have come from all over the world. It's an extraordinary collection of things. One of the key things behind me is the Triceratops skull, which was excavated in 2012 from Montana. Um, he took 3,000 man-hours to get into this current state, and we really think that he could be one of the best things in the sale. He's got £150,000 as a price tag, and we hope to appeal to the contemporary buyers with him. All the items have been put together as a public exhibition ahead of the sale. So what do people make of it? One of these things set you back about three to five grand, so I think it'd be a great thing to have, but trying to persuade them what my wife is more important than a, getting a car um, this year might be difficult, um, so perhaps I won't be bidding at the auction. It's quite interesting to see such a weird, in a way, collection of curiosities. And there was one piece that freaked me personally out the most, and that is a piece of mourning for the death made out of hair of people who probably passed away. I just fell in love with this amazing Rolls Royce turbine from the early 70s, but I think it's going to be a little bit expensive to me and I will certainly need a bigger house. Remember these? This is an original 1970s chopper. It's rare because it's got no crossbar, so it was made just for girls. So only a few of them were ever made and it's expected to fetch up to £1,000 in the auction. So if you've got room for a cave bear skeleton in your sitting room or you fancy a giant wooden chair, then you know where to go. Sophie Van Bruggen, BBC News. Joining us now is antiques expert and television presenter Paul Hayes. Paul, good to have you with us. Great to be here. Some marvellous things there. It's a very, very strange sale. Uh, there is something out there for everybody, and this is the sale that, that caters for that. It, it is just fantastic. What, it, what items catch your eye? Uh, I mean, if you like on a personal note, I, mean, I suppose you have, to set, do you have to, in your head, do you separate things out from investments and something you love? Is yeah, that how it works? Exactly, but I always do believe by what you like. At the end of the day, you've got to, to live with this thing. If you're not interested in dinosaur skulls, you're not going to have it on the mantelpiece or in your living room. For See, a that's long what time. I want. <laughs> really? Yeah, I want the Triceratops skull. Can't yeah. afford it. Well, it's an amazing thing. It's a quarter of a million pounds, you know. But but it, apparently, it's uh, the only um, one of the only intact ones out there. And of course, uh, legend has it now, or rumor has it, they will start to clone DNA. So perhaps they could they could recreate this Triceratops. So its in the uniqueness future. makes it an, a, a guaranteed investment. Absolutely guaranteed. Yeah. Some of the other stuff. I mean, you know, I was I was looking at that that chopper bike. You know, I'm old enough to remember. You know, <laughs> all I ever wanted was one of those bikes. Now that's they're saying the, these are worth. The, the, sums of money. They're the classic cars of the future, and uh, the antique business is led by nostalgia. We all remember having those in the 1970s. It is very much of that period, and you want to buy your childhood back. You want it. I mean, I think the, re the real showstopper in this has to be the robot. Uh, well, we can, see this, we can <laughs> see this robot. We can see this robot, and. Well, oh no, maybe we can't, but that's going for around eight to £12,000. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally think that's slightly underestimated. I mean, I'm a big sort of science fiction fan. That does seem to be where the, the market is at the moment, this vintage retro sci-fi stuff. It's an eight-foot working robot. It, it reacts to commands, it reacts to light beams. You, you can make it do things. For 1957, that was amazing, Italian. And it, it's just very famous. It's just a great thing to have. So where do you imagine someone like that will end up? Is it going to be... A, is it someone who, who's uh, got a lot of 
money who thinks, you know what, I'd like, I'd like that. Like in, <laughs> in my dining room or in the kitchen, or is it... How, how do these things work? Well, possibly. I mean, it's the sort of thing you would just love to own. I would love that, and eight to 10,000 in the scheme of things. It doesn't seem a lot of money for that item if you're interested in that sort of period. Uh, people that are interested in technology, interested in computers, you know, it's interesting to see how this thing developed and what the science was at the time. Mm. Uh, but I think a business would buy that. I think it's purely an investment. Put that in your foyer of your business. Oh, I see. Everyone it's a talking point, kind of talking thing. Point. Who would buy a stuffed ostrich? <laughs> well, it's a sort you know, of thing. Yeah. Eight to twelve thousand pounds. This yeah. is supposed to go for. It's a bit macabre. It's a little bit macabre, but bearing in mind this was actually stuffed and mounted in the 18th century. It's come from an Italian villa. He was very famous for having strange and wonderful artefacts. You go back to 1785, who would have seen an ostrich at that time? It must have been a, a real showstopper. So it has all that provenance. Provenance is the key with all these things. You want to know where they've come from, who's owned them, and, and that, that's key important. And the, I'm amazed by the, the stuffing process. I mean, just to have kept it intact that way. Exactly. It must have been amazingly well done. And this has been kind of re stuff. Yeah. Presumably they knew how to do that. Yeah, a, a really funny story actually if, if, you, have, if you have a second. Um, they had some hippos that are now in the, the um, Natural History Museum in London and the person who did stuff them and mounted them had never seen a genuine hippo ah. and he tried to overstuff it to get rid of the wrinkles. Uh. So if you look at these things, they're like balloons. Because he, no, he had no visual <laughs> reference for what it's supposed to look like. He had no idea what they would look like <laughs> at the time. Yeah. That in itself, though, might even increase the price of something, like if it was in, in auction, because it's so odd. Exactly. It's a fascinating thing. Where else are you going to buy one? And I think all these items that are in this sale are unique. You can't put a price on them. And you watch, there'll be a bidding frenzy for them. But what the about that item you see behind you there, the rocking horse? Now, on there, you can't really see the scale. This is 15 foot high. Wow. It was made a couple of years ago. It's 28 been... foot long. Yeah, isn't that just incredible? And it has a trap door underneath it. It's almost like a genuine Trojan horse. And uh, it's the largest known rocking horse ever to be made. It's only a couple of years old. Uh, a guy called Andrew Dew. And uh, that's 25, 30,000 quid. Have you got somewhere to put it? Are you into rocking horses? Are you into horses? Gosh, you know, what a great thing to have. Mm. Needs a whole, needs a whole thing. Um, we've got a couple of other bits as well we can take a look at. OK. Um, this is... And what, how do I pronounce this? An or ornithopter. Ornithopter, yes. Ornithopter, <laughs> a flying machine. A wax flatter ornithopter. Have you not got one of these at home? Uh, you know what? I haven't. <laughs> I've That's magnificent. It looks out. like something from uh, the Magnificent Men in the Flying Machines. That's isn't it? exactly what it was supposed to be. This was made for a film. It was made for the young Sherlock Holmes in 1985, a Steven Spielberg film. And what's wonderful about this, they went back to the original drawings of the aircraft of the day. They used the same materials. It's extremely accurate. It's almost a working machine. It's been in a hangar since the film, so it's not been used. What a great thing. Now, you can imagine you've got a large entrance hall in your in your uh, work premises, your business premises, this hanging from the ceiling. Mm. What a great, great thing to own, you know, and I think that's uh, I think that's 25 to, to 40,000, I think, which is, uh, it seems quite cheap. You know, I think every house should have one. I think. <laughs> <laughs> you can nip down to the shops in that. I think, uh, they, they are great <laughs> items. Uh, thank you very much. Oh, you're all the welcome. Thank you very Expert much. view. Is anything cheap? Is anything, uh, I say cheap, is anything kind of yeah, there's Lovely something there for night. everybody. Have a good look. There's something there for everybody within, within all budgets. And I think, uh, you know, if you club together with your mates, you'll buy something unique, I think. <laughs> Very good. The Out of the Ordinary auction takes place at Christie's in London on the 5th of September. Stay with us. We're going to be speaking to one of the...